Hi, everybody. Good evening. Good Tuesday evening, and welcome to Rosenberg, Texas, home of the Randall High School Lions, and welcome to Tuesday Night Volleyball, presented by the Volleyball School. I'm Roger Smith on your one and only broadcast home for Fort Bend County High School Sports, ByteFortBend.com. Glad to have you with us. Also glad to have Merle Bertrand inside the mothership at Vipe World Headquarters. He'll make sure everything sounds just as it should. And we'll get you ready right now for a matchup between Randall and the Hightower Hurricanes on Tuesday Night Volleyball presented by the Volleyball School. We'll start with the Countdown to First Serve Show. But before we do that, we want to tell you what a busy week that we're going to have. So Tuesday Night Volleyball tonight. And then tomorrow night, a very unique event. It's not a competition. It is basically a pep rally, but a very significant one because across the state of Texas, in all UIL public school, high school sports, they are instituting something, implementing something called the Texas Way, which is about better sportsmanship and about fewer ejections from uh, hotly contested athletic events and contests where sometimes players and coaches' emotions can get the better of them. So it's something that the state of Texas needs to uh, get out ahead of, and that's what they're doing with the Texas Way. We'll learn a lot about it during a pep rally at Mercer Stadium. It starts at 7 p.m. tomorrow, and we will be there live. We'll talk with many different guests, including Shannon Rideout, one of the assistant athletic directors for Fort Bend ISD. But after tonight's match between Randall and Hightower on the volleyball court, and then the Texas Way on Wednesday, we're gonna have Friday night volleyball. Well, it's really Tuesday night volleyball on Friday as it's Fulcher at Travis. Fulcher, a very impressive debut in Class 6A. After several years in 5A, they took on the defending state champions, the Grand Oaks Grizzlies, and beat them in four on the Grizzlies home court. So very, very surprising outcome, I would say, to many people. But it makes me very excited for what the Fulcher girls, who have won one state championship back in 2019, they won the 4A title as they defeated Hereford in the state final. And they've been chasing another title ever since. They've had some tough roadblocks along the way, but maybe, just maybe in their very first year in Class 6A, they can get yet another state title. All right, so Ridgepoint is gonna be taking on Fulcher after we get the Fulcher versus Travis game on Friday. So one week from night, uh, tonight, it is Ridgepoint against Fulcher. And then we'll start our football coverage on Thursday, August the 29th. Clear Falls taking on your high tower Hurricanes. Then on Friday the 30th, Clements against Crawford, the very first varsity football game for Crawford playing uh, a schedule where their oldest class is juniors. But they're gonna take on Clements and see what they can do. And it's gonna be very exciting. So we invite everybody to listen to that one on Friday night the 30th, starting at 6.45 p.m. with a countdown to kickoff show. And then on Saturday, August the 31st, it'll be the Willow Ridge Eagles. They've dropped down from 5A to 4A and they'll start their season against the Lamar Consolidated Mustangs. That kickoff will be at six and our countdown to kickoff show will be at 545. All right, enough about that. Now let's hear from our great sponsors who have brought you this broadcast of High Tower Volleyball taking on Randall. We're brought to you by First Tyron Automotive with four great Fort Bend County locations. And we're also brought to you by Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider of VipeFortBend.com by Xfinity, home of the 10G Next Generation Network. The future starts now. Archer Volkswagen and by the Volleyball School. They've got three great locations, the original one in Katy, one in the Woodlands, but also the one that means the most to us in Fort Bend County is right between Austin High and Travis High. It is the third location of the Volleyball School. And it's on West Belfort. So you should go by and train at the Volleyball School. Go to thevolleyballschool.com for more information. We'll be right back and visit with the new head coach of the Hightower Hurricanes. She is Sharonda Marshall. 
Glad to have you with us on VibeFortBend.com. We're the volleyball school with three locations, Katy, the Woodlands, and the newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to help you get on the top club and school teams and have fun while doing it. The Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. All right, good Tuesday evening, everybody. Welcome to the Countdown to First Serve show. It's a pretty interesting non-district matchup as Hightower moves over from Mo City to take on the Randall Lions of Lamar Consolidated ISD. And how about this? We have a new head coach. Sharonda Marshall is the leader of the Hurricanes volleyball program, and your team is 5-2. and two. Tell us how you're playing, things you've been doing well, and what you want to do better. Um, right now, my girls are playing really well. Uh, we have a lot of team chemistry. Um, if we can stay a little bit more consistent on our technique and our mechanics, I'll Outside of us having the athletic ability, we'll look much better, a little bit more cohesive on the floor and a little bit more effective. Well, there's something that is new to a lot of people who have followed High Tower Volleyball and the other Fort Bend ISD schools, but this is your first year, so I guess you don't have to adjust anything. No more George Ranch, and you're not going to be playing Katie schools in the first round of the playoffs if you get there. What do you think about the alignment of the district and who you're going to face first if and when you get to the postseason? Um, I think the alignment is pretty great. Um, I don't, I, right now, we're not really really worried about who we're going to face. We're trying to take it a game at a time right now, a step at a time, making sure that we are extremely prepared before we meet whoever it is. Um, and again, right now, our district is still very competitive. So we're still looking to go to the playoffs this year. But again, we're not looking that far ahead as to who that competitor will be. We just need to make sure that we are thoroughly prepared. I know it's important for the established schools in Class 6A of Fort Bend to make sure Crawford knows who's boss and keep them down for a while. You've already beaten them a couple of times, right? According to Max Preps, it looked like you played Crawford yeah. twice. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, we have. But, un well, Crawford is 4A um, because they're still a newly established school. But we have beat them uh, twice this season, and they have a really good upcoming squad, though. They're just really young. Yeah, I realize they don't have seniors, but they do have the benefit of everything that is in that community, all the people that care about athletics are supporting them, whether it's with dollars or volunteerism or, uh, you know, feeding really good young athletes into the program. So you got to watch out sometimes for those young programs. They don't know any better, and sometimes they start beating teams that have been around a while. And that's right, um, because they do have a really great coach, Coach Smith. Shout out to her. She had her baby last Friday right after the uh, A-Leap tournament. Um, so congratulations to her. But again, just like you said, those kids are really hungry and they are sponges. So when you can feed them and they're just willing and ready to learn, they can look really, really good in the future. So I, I do look forward to them climbing 5A and 6A and, and meeting us there real soon. We're talking with the very youthful Sharonda Marshall. This is not her first head coaching job, but let me, uh, I'll let you go after this one. But uh, who are the key players, players that you know they have to fulfill their promise, you know, having shown how good they are in previous seasons for the Hurricanes to have a really successful year? Well, we have our number seven captain, McKenna Henderson. She is a six rotation outside. She is a very aggressive hitter in the front row, but she's very much so aggressive on the back row. And when she takes leadership and she gets that fire in her eyes, there's nothing that McKenna can't do. We also have Tanaya Johnson. Um, we moved her to the outside. She was a middle blocker uh, before I came, but she has a lot of bouncer and she has a lot of fire. So I look forward to Tanaya. She is a junior, um, number eight, to be one of the main threats tonight on the floor and uh, for this season and next season. Thank you, Coach Marshall. And I heard great enthusiasm there. And that was your team. Yes, it was. And so there are a lot of people in this gym that will be rooting for Randall. It's going to be loud. We'll be right back. And we'll visit with the head coach, Kristen Cavallo, who leads the Randall program right after this.
Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through September 21st, get fast, reliable Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Actual speeds vary. All right, this is the Countdown to First Serve show. And it's our third volleyball match of the season on VibeFortBend.com. Time to visit with Kristen Cavallo, the only head varsity volleyball coach that Randall High School has ever had. And first of all, tell me about how your season has gone so far leading up to this matchup with Hightower. Hi, thank you. Um, it's definitely been an adventure. Um, we've had a couple matches that we found early success. And then we went to the Pearland Invitational and we met up with some schools who were ranked in the top 10 in the state and we learned a lot of lessons. So we've had moments of greatness and moments of intense learning early in this first week. Well, I know that who you have coming back doesn't always dictate completely how well a team is gonna do, no matter what the sport is. But who's coming back that you know you can count on that you think can carry you into the playoffs and give you a good chance to win several once you get there? We actually have a really unique roster this year in that we don't have any all-stars. We have a lot of very talented girls who work well together. You know, last year with Skyler, it was an obvious killer on the court who we gave the ball to a lot. This year, the wealth is spread out really successfully. We have uh, Malaya Graves coming back for her second year since having her knee reconstructed, and she's doing really well for us. We have a couple new girls work in the middle for us with Marina Harold, who, although she's a senior, she's new to the starting lineup. Um, and then we have the Thompson twins playing at um, DS for Michaela, and Madison is setting for us. Um, Imani Uko has stepped up. She's a sophomore who's setting for us, doing really well. You know, it's, it's just a really cool experience when the entire team is stepping up and working together and needing each other to get through the games. An amazing coincidence. Two years ago, the Hightower boys varsity basketball team also had the Thompson Twins. You too have the Thompson Twins. You are too young to really appreciate their musical greatness from the 80s, but uh, the Thompson Twins can never be a bad thing. Hey, I'm an 80s baby myself. I'm not as long as you might think. But um, no, this is actually the fourth set of twins I've had come through my program. So we like double trouble around here. By the way, we talked to you last year when, uh, you know, the, the relationship, you and your husband, Nick, who is the head football coach at George Ranch, and what it's like to manage your family and your relationship with two head coaches at two different campuses. So um, I guess there's always that chance that you or he could, well, let me ask you this. Does he come to any of your volleyball matches? Is he able to do so? Do you get to go to his football games? Are you able to do so? Yeah, it's a little bit more difficult this year. He's up in KDISD at Morton Ranch this year. Um, he took the job in January, which geographically makes things more difficult. He's not just up the road anymore. Um, he was actually at two of my matches so far already. He's come out um, since football hasn't started their games yet. He was able to stop by Friday night um, against Eisenhower and bring my youngest, which is always fun, being worried that your four-year-old is going to run on the court in the middle of the match. Um, but no, we, we do our best to support each other when we can. It's not very often. Most of the supporting of one another that we do is behind the scenes and, you know, being each other's biggest fan and making sure that we're checking in on each other as the seasons get difficult. Um, this year, I'm very thankful he has several Thursday and Saturday games, 
so I will get to go to some of those with my kids. Um, all four of my children have been sideline staples uh, when they were at George Ranch with him, and they're looking forward to putting on some purple this year. This is web radio. I need to describe everything, and right now my face is red. Oh. I should have known that your husband had changed schools, but you know when I, I go back and forth with Mr. Gabbard about a couple of things and he doesn't bring up the fact that George Ranch has a new coach. Um, I don't know, I guess I feel like saying that ain't my fault coach, but anyway, all the best to your husband Nick and his new digs and are your children going to be LCISD athletes or are they Katie now? Uh, that's a great question. They're at LCISD right now. They're staying at all their same schools right now, but we're not quite sure what the future holds. Um, obviously, my husband wants to coach my boys. They both play football, um, so they will most likely be heading wherever it is he's blowing the whistle. All right. Well, I was just thinking uh, I don't really like this as a trend, but I hear that maybe NIL will have a presence in Texas high schools by that time, and, and I guess it can be negotiated, huh? Yeah. I pray that it never takes a foot in high school ball. What's so awesome about the lower level sports before they're worried about money is that you get the true excitement of a kid in their sport without any ulterior motives. It's just them and the success of the game. And I pray that that doesn't get taken away from us. I hope that we get to enjoy amateurism as long as possible. And if I have a say in it, I will continue to voice my opinion about that one. I also pray for that. Um, you have haven't been able to spend too much time with me, but I promise you, I love this so much. All the sports that I get to see and watching the kids work so hard, it's so beneficial. You know, the, the byproducts of competing in extracurriculars like the kids do is, is just so wonderful. And I do think it would poison the water, so to speak, if we did have that NIL come in. So I hope that the UIL leaders can hold the line and, and make it continue to work like it does now. Yeah, same here. I mean, the reality is, is that when you get NIL involved, you lose the purity of the sport. People have to start worrying about outside things and money and popularity contests when really it should just be about the kid in the game. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I hope that we'll be able to do another one of your team's volleyball matches. I know you're off to a rough start. But, you know, it doesn't matter how you start. It's how you finish. And you're not even playing district matches yet. So just uh, keep working. Absolutely. And it's never a rough start. You're either winning or you're learning. All right. Thank you. That is Kristen Cavallo, head coach of the Randall Lions. And her husband is the former head football coach at George Ranch. So anyway, we'll be back. And I think this match is going to start pretty soon with Hightower and the Randall Lions. We'll be right back on VibeFortBend.com, your one and only broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. First Iron Auto welcomes you back to school. Kids got their new shoes and backpacks. Make sure your auto is geared up for those trips in the carpool lane and games. First Iron Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. Great savings on oil changes and brake service too. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com. The teams are practicing their serves, so pretty soon we will get the serves going for real here on Tuesday Night Volleyball, presented by the Volleyball School. Leonetti Graphics is the gold standard in Fort Bend County for screen printing embroidery, banners, signs, t-shirts, and all kinds of specialty items. Whatever you need to advertise or to show school spirit, team spirit, or company spirit, nobody does it better than Leonetti Graphics. They started creating their products in an apartment. It was 23 years ago, and now they've got this state-of-the-art facility in Stafford. They can make every marketing vision that you have come to life. So call your friends at Leonetti Graphics. 281-499-4959. Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider for VipeFortBend.com. Okay, 
So as balls continue to, to uh, what's the word, um, pummel my table as they work on their serves, let's tell you about Hightower's season so far. They're five and two. They've beaten Northbrook, Houston Heights, Willow Ridge twice, and they beat Crawford, and all of those matches were in straight sets, and they lost to a pretty good Aleph Elsick team twice. By the way, Hightower is in a sort of new district. The only thing that's different about it is the number. It's District 21 6A, and it no longer has George Ranch in it. So it's the usual suspects, Austin, Bush, Clements, Dulles, Elkins, Ridgepoint, and Travis. Last year, when it was District 26A, Ridgepoint, Travis, George Ranch, and Austin reached the playoffs. Only Ridgepoint won in the first round. And then they lost in the second round, the area round, to Cy Fair. So Fort Bend ISD's Class 6A teams are looking to bounce back in 2024. And as for Randall, we would love to tell you what their record are, but it is shrouded in mystery. I looked at Max Preps this afternoon. It said they were 0-4. I talked to a young man who is a student photographer here at Randall, and he says he thinks they're 3-9. and nine. So we asked Coach Kristen Cavallo, and she says, we're 2-0 at home. That's the only thing that matters. So, okay, but I can tell you that according to Max Preps, the Lions girls have lost to Leander Rouse, to Conroe, Manville, and Montgomery. Those are four really, really good programs. They had games scheduled against Bush and St. John's. I'm pretty sure that they won the matchup against St. John's, but beating, uh, I'm sorry, I'm pretty sure they won the matchup against Bush, but playing against St. John's is totally different. So in their young history, the Randall Lions volleyball girls are one and one in their playoff confrontations. They are one and one all time against these high tower hurricanes. And now here's where it gets fuzzy. Max Prep says that Randall all time is 26 and 44, but we're not sure what their actual record is right now. And they are 13 and 18 at home all time, according to Max Preps. But based on what uh, Coach Cavallo says, I'm going to say they're 15 and 18 on their home court all time. This year, their district makeup is 22 5A. Their district opponents are Kempner, Marshall, Lamar Consolidated, Terry, and two new friends, Victoria East and Victoria West. And I think those two starred in a comedy called Victor Victoria way back in the 70s. I kid, they didn't really. Okay, I'm not sure if we're gonna have starting lineups introduced here or not. I'm thinking probably not. So let me get the Randall starters for you. Got to mark them down. Okay, you got the Thompson twins, Madison and Michaela. Marina Harold, senior middle blocker. Madison Sherry, she's an outside hitter and a junior. And Malaya Graves, she is an outside hitter. And the first point is an unforced error, unforced error by Randall. And Hightower takes a one to nothing lead. We're going best three out of five here on Tuesday Night Volleyball, presented by the Volleyball School. Hightower serving with Monica Daniels. Now Randall has to attempt to spike with feet on the floor. That was Marina Harold, And Hightower gets a winner, reaching high above her head. Chloe O'Neill Taylor hits one down. It didn't have a lot of velocity, but it didn't need a lot. It is two to nothing, Hightower on top. And the serves continue from Monica Daniels. Now Randall looking to attack back the other way. Big swing by Asia Aikens. I failed to mention her in the starting lineup. And she gets one down for a winner. Deep in the middle, just on top of the baseline. So Randall now trailing two to one and serving and Malaya Graves goes to the middle of the baseline and lets it fly. Screwball action. Hightower gets it back up in the air. 
There is an awkward spike attempt by Michaela Thompson. It's the best she could do. The set really wasn't ideal. It was flying outside of the red and white boundary antenna that is attached to the net. So it's two to two. Randall has just tied it up and now they're serving again with Graves. High tower on the attack and that is a high dig way off the rafters and it comes down out of bounds. Oh my goodness, we've got number one for Hightower and her name isn't on the roster. It's just blank next to her name. I don't think she's in a federal witness protection program. We'll get that sorted out. Another point now goes to Randall and now they have scored two in a row as there is a wild spike attempt from Hightower's Chloe O'Neill Taylor. Four to two Randall. And the serve, there it gets down from Malaya Graves. It went way off the court and Hightower couldn't redirect it. They had three hits and could not get it back over the net. So it's now five to two Randall. The Lions girls have scored five straight points. The official in the elevated chair tells Malaya Graves to go ahead. She swings, hits the top of the net and gets a lucky bounce down onto the floor on the Hightower side. It's six to two. Pretty good crowd, including some football players who are out practicing in the brutal heat. Grave sends it deep. That was a hot serve. Hightower is gonna be able to send it back over. Now it's a bump set spike play and they set up Sherry, Ma uh, Madison Sherry rather, and she hits it out. So that ends the string of six straight Randall Lions points. Hightower trails six to three and will now serve. It's Anna Luna. The senior is ready to fire with top spin. Randall bumps it up, a back set by Madison Thompson and she sets up Marina Harold who gets a clean kill. That gets down to make it seven to three. Now Harold comes out and she's replaced by Junie Ramirez. And Junie Ramirez with the big white bow on her ponytail, ready to serve. Taking her time, now waiting for the okay from the official. Ramirez leaps and sends it deep to the middle. Hightower thinks it's gonna go out and they're right. That's the fourth point for them. They trail seven to four and now they will serve. Michaela Thompson. Michaela and Madison are the Thompson twins. And the serve is bumped up nicely by Graves. There's a skirmish at the net and the winner of this one is Zara Olavachi. Senior middle blocker for the Lions. She gets the point on that one. So it's eight to four Randall on top and they'll be serving again. The Randall Lions girls wearing the black shorts or in some cases the black leotards. They've got the light gray jerseys with the black numerals outlined in white. And on the back of the jersey it says family. Hightower returning the serve, blocked! And a winner for Randall. Making the block Zara Olavachi. She said, I don't think so to McKenna Henderson. Point to Randall. They lead 9-4 and they have the serve back and now Imani Uko will serve. Right-hander with a big swing. And she goes wide with that first serve down the near sideline and it goes out. We got a Dolly Parton game. It is 9-5. Hightower trailing and serving. And they are Athletic girls standing between me and the server who is number one for Hightower. We'll get her name as soon as we can. Randall kind of oversets the serve, trying to return the serve and hit it into the net and they couldn't get it back over in three hits. So it's now nine to six. Hightower gets within three and will serve again. Here goes the libero serve. She's wearing the green jersey and mishandled by Randall. Unfortunately, they had Malaya Graves and Imani Uko both going for the ball. 
and it rattled down to the floor. So Hightower gets the point. They trail nine to seven and serve again. A little back set, setting up Asia Akins, but a whistle. And it's a violation, I think, a foot under the net by Randall. Their lead has shrunk to nine to eight. They take a timeout. We'll take it with them. We're in the first game, Tuesday night volleyball, presented by the Volleyball School. We're the Volleyball School with three locations, Katy, the Woodlands, and the newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to help you get on the top club and school teams and have fun while doing it. The Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. First Tire and Auto welcomes you back to school. Kids got their new shoes and backpacks. Make sure your auto is geared up for those trips in the carpool lane and games. First Tire and Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. Great savings on oil changes and brake service too. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com. In the first point coming out of the timeout, Randall scores. Hightower hit one out, and that makes it nine or 10 to 8. But now on the ensuing serve, Randall serves it out, so now it's... Hightower trailing only 10 to 9. Junie Ramirez, I'm sorry, wrong roster. Addison Jones will serve for the Hurricanes, and she hits it out. Something's going around. Missed serves are contagious. It's 11 to 9, Randall. And Asia Aikens takes her turn to serve. There is the serve from Michaela Thompson. Hightower is going to return it with velocity. Actually with finesse. They tap it over, and Randall makes the defensive play. Beautiful block try by Monica Daniels, and it ends up being uh, that's she plays for Hightower and made a great play, but Randall with great reflexes. Right after she blocked it, they sent it back over to an empty spot on the floor. It's now a three-point lead, 12-9 to nine for Randall, and another serve from Michaela Thompson. Hightower lets the first dig go way beyond the boundary, but they control it and send it back over. Now a big swing from Mc Malaya Graves. Ball rattling around like a pinball. Now it's on the Hightower side, and a big swing by number eight, Tanaya Johnson. Cannot get it to go down. Great play by Hightower, an excellent block. A little flick of the wrist shot, and Tanaya Johnson, Johnson was able to hit it Back medium depth, and all of the players had gravitated toward the net. There was nobody there. Hightower gets within 12 to 10. We're in game one of a best three out of five match. And now Hightower uh, has a good serve, and Randall mishandles the return. Asia Akins and Imani Uko both got a, a touch there, but they couldn't get it over the net. Hightower is back within one, 12 to 11. Serve coming in hot. But it'll be sent over by Randall. Hightower with a desperation dig and a nice return. Now there's a jump ball at the net, 50-50 ball, and it ends up being a point to Hightower, and the Hurricane girls have tied it up. 12-12. Tanaya Johnson tying her shoe, and soon she will serve for the Hurricanes wearing the black jersey tops and the forest green shorts. White letters outlined in forest green. Now another 50-50 ball at the net. Monica Daniels sends it over for Hightower and the Hurricanes get the point. They have taken the lead, 13 to 12. Tanaya Johnson serve, goes deep. Now there's a big swing and a missed opportunity there for Monica Daniels. 
as Randall overset it and the high tower middle blocker was really ready to just wail on the ball but she didn't get all of it and it went into the net. We're tied at 13. Off the bench, Madison Thompson will serve now. Everybody we've seen serving thus far in this match is a right-hander. Thompson with a little backspin on that one, a lot of air under the serve. And now a poor set. Michaela Thompson tried to get it inside the red and white boundary antenna on the near side, couldn't do that, so it's 14 to 13 Randall. There's Madison Thompson serve and Hightower ready to swing hard. Instead it was finesse from Monica Daniels. Now it's on the Randall side. Big swing by Aikens and, or Graves rather, and it's a winner. She hit it down the far sideline. Hightower dug it out and hit it back over the net, but it went wide. Correction, correction, that point goes to Randall. Sorry about that. The serve is dug out. And there's a tap by McKenna Henderson. She cannot get it to go down. Now Randall sends it cross court, hits the antenna. Point to Hightower. We've got a one point game again, 15 to 14. The libero goes out and Chloe O'Neill Taylor comes back in. Don't forget more volleyball. Tuesday night volleyball on a Friday. It's Fulcher at Travis starting at about 6 p.m. Another point to Randall as Hightower was receiving serve and hit it into the net. Randall Lyons leading 16-14 and it's Graves. Sends it to the middle. Hightower with the libero getting a shot for a spike. And it is dug out and a point goes to Randall as Graves kind of dug it. Didn't intend to hit it over the net, but it did go over the net. And Hightower left it alone thinking it was going to be out, but it was in. And it's 17 to 14. Graves serves again. Lots of top spin coming in hot and an ace. A service winner diving attempt from Jamila Blackman. She got it airborne, but it went sideways. It's 18 to 14 and Randall smelling victory in game one of this match. The dig on the serve rattles around in the rafters and falls to the floor. Oh my goodness. There were four Hurricanes girls standing there looking at the ball and nobody took it. 19 to 14. Here's another grave serve, more top spin. They overset it and it's out. They cannot handle the serves right now of Malaya Graves. And that makes it 20 to 14. Five straight points for Randall to open up this six point lead. Graves fires one in again. This time Hightower's gonna send it back. There's a block right there at the net and Randall keeps it airborne. And there's a bump over by Graves and now Hightower can attack and stop the bleeding. Big swing, but a shot goes out. Chloe O'Neill Taylor, and it makes it 21 to 14. The Randall Lions on top of Hightower. Timeout taken. We'll take it with them. 21 to 14 on VibeFortBend.com. First game. First Iron Auto welcomes you back to school. Kids got their new shoes and backpacks. Make sure your auto is geared up for those trips in the carpool lane and games. First Iron Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. Great savings on oil changes and brake service too. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com. Our football broadcast start Thursday, August 29th. Clear Falls at High Tower from Hall Stadium. Countdown to kickoff show starting at 6.45 p.m. that evening. The next night, Friday the 30th, Clements taking on Crawford. Same time. And then on Saturday night at 6, it's Lamar Consolidated and Willow Ridge. We're back to action, 21 to 14. 
Hightower trailing in the first game to Randall. Big swing on the part of Marina Harold, and it goes out of bounds off the, actually it went inbounds off the Hightower block. So the Hurricanes get a point coming out of the timeout, and they trail now 21 to 15. Off the bench, Anna Luna, no I'm sorry, wrong roster again, Ajane Reed. Now it is Randall with the best swing of the night. It is Asia Akins off of a block and down on the high tower side. Point to the Lions. They lead it 22 to 15. Now a double substitution for Randall. Juni Ramirez and Zara Olivachi back into the match. Ramirez with a knuckleball serve, bumped up by high tower. And that's a nice attempt by Favier Aguilar. Does not get down. Randall just bumps it over. They had no spike opportunity. Now there's a swing by Chloe O'Neill Taylor, a whistle. And the point goes to Randall because O'Neill Taylor swung and hit the net on her spike. You can't do that. Junie, Junie, Junie Ramirez ready to fire with a 23-15 lead. Hightower bumps it up. Big swing and a winner for Favier Aguilar. Desperation attempt over there near the far sideline from Asia Aikens to keep it alive. It's 23 to 16. Randall leading, but Hightower serving. McKenna Henderson, one of the team captains, along with Tanaya Johnson. The right hander swings near the far sideline. And now a set up for Aikens. She swings hard, it comes right back. Now Randall will attack again from the middle. And Olavachi cannot get it through the high tower block and the Canes girls narrow the gap a bit. It's 23 to 17. McKenna Henderson ready to fire again, here it comes. Coming in hot. Randall handles it, however. And now the big swing from Asia Akins. And she gets it down between Hightower Hurricanes girls. And it is game point. 24 to 17. When the, the two teams change over. Right now, uh, it is Randall defending the south end of the floor. But when Hightower comes to the south end of the floor, I'm going to figure out who number one is. All right, here we go with the serve on game point from Imani Uko. Hightower trying to prolong the game, and they will prolong it at least one point. They get a winner, 24 to 18. The game-saving play by Favier Aguilar. And now the nameless green, uh, green jersey-wearing libero serves with top spin. Randall looking to attack, and it's just a tap over by Asia Aikens. Hightower trying to get a winner. Battle at the net. It's on the Hightower side, and now a setup. And the setup goes to Tanaya Johnson, and she scores to make it 24 to 19. Hightower not going away. Hightower trying to improve on their 5 and 2 record. Serve comes in hot, and now a back set for Akins. Is it good? Yes, it is good, and that's the end of game one. 25 to 19, Randall takes the victory in game one. We'll step aside on Tuesday Night Volleyball, presented by the Volleyball School. And Randall leads this match over Hightower one game to none. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. 
Now through September 21st, get fast, reliable Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Actual speeds vary. We're the volleyball school with three locations. Katy, the Woodlands, and the newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to help you get on the top club and school teams and have fun while doing it. The Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. First Siren Auto welcomes you back to school. Kids got their new shoes and backpacks. Make sure your auto is geared up for those trips in the carpool lane and games. First Tire and Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. Great savings on oil changes and brake service, too. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com. We're back inside the gym at Randall, and the crowd is quieted down for, you know, I'm sure it's a very, very short time, but I have a new best friend. I want to tell everybody how grateful I am to Ashley Castillo. She is a student trainer for Hightower, and she helped me out. The libero wearing number one for Hightower tonight is Christine Knowles. So I had everybody on the roster, and for some reason, Christine Knowles, uh, her name uh, did not make it onto the roster, but now, now we know. So you got Randall winning the first game, 25 to 19 over Hightower. And according to Coach Kristen Cavallo, Randall is trying to remain perfect at home. They have won both of their home matches. So she, she didn't tell me the comprehensive record. She just said that we're 2-0 at home and that's all that matters. So Hightower will try the south end of the court and see if that works a little bit rougher, uh, a little bit better rather, and they can tie this match up. Don't forget Tuesday night volleyball on Friday. Every once in a while, we do that. It's not like we're uh, calendar challenged or anything like that, but when there are no varsity football games other than scrimmages, we're going to do volleyball on Friday night. It'll be full sure at Travis. Coming your way at about 6 p.m. Randall serves to start game two. It's Madison Thompson. And she's over there kind of bumping the ball up a few times. Now she is ready to serve, and here it comes. And her first serve goes out. Unforced error makes it one to nothing Hightower. They enjoyed a very brief lead at the beginning of game one. And now serving for them is Marina Harold. Now Randall's going to send it back. And a long shot by Malaya Graves. She got under it, meant to get on top of it, and it went long. Two to nothing, Hightower on top. Service continues with Harold from the middle of the baseline. There it goes with a little cutting action on it. And a hot smash coming through and a kill for Randall. It's Madison Sherry, the junior outside hitter. Last name spelled C-H-E-R-Y. All of her teammates tried to uh, get me to call her Cherry, as in Nina Cherry. Some of you from the 90s, I think, or maybe that was the 80s, remember the Buffalo stance? Well, it's Cherry. And it's two to one. 
Hightower on top, but Randall has evened it up. Nice swing. Asia Aiken showing great flexibility, throwing the fist way back behind her head before she came down on the ball, and it's 2-2. Two to two. And Randall will serve. It is Graves. Knowles bumps it up. Overset it a bit. There is a battle at the net, and it goes to Hightower. A Randall, rather. I'm sorry. Three to two. The ball last touched on the high tower side, and then it went out of bounds off of a hurricane forearm. So three to two, Randall. Grave serves. Top spin serve. Coming in hot. Bumped up nicely by Tanaya Johnson. Now it's on the Randall side, and they will attack. And it's a swing from Sherry. Oh, Sherry. She scores. Gets the kill to go down between two high tower defenders, and it's four to two. Randall leading, and Malaya Graves will serve again. Spins it and serves with her feet on the floor. Nice dig by Knowles. The ball is in out of bounds territory, but high tower is able to redirect it and get it back over. Now Randall going to swing again. It is Graves. She cannot get it down. A nice attempt to uh, our defense by Madison Thompson. Now it's back on the Randall side, way past the baseline. Graves, and now just bumping it over to save the point is Asia Aikens. Hightower attacking now. Big swing from Madison Thompson. Cannot get it to go down. Now Graves hits one, and she paced it to the corner. It's good. Five to two. Randall leads Hightower. And the Randall sub-varsity girls like to clap and spin around. Celebrating points. It's a thing here in Rosenberg. Graves ready to serve. She doesn't go all the way up to the line as she serves. She serves from deep. And it ends up being a point to Randall. Six to two. Graves throws the screw ball. Hightower is going to be able to send it back. Madison Thompson taps it over the fingertips. Sometimes you need a, a little finesse. Sometimes you need a lot. And finesse worked to score that point for Hightower, which trails 6-3. to three. Favier Aguilar fires with no spin whatsoever. We're not playing in the spin room, evidently. And now there's a spike attempt by uh, Randall's Asia Aikens, and she fires it long. Hightower gets within two. They trail six to four. Ajane Reed serves. Randall overset it, but somehow got it back over. Oh, that was miraculous. And now Hightower with a pretty miraculous shot of their own. And now Aikens is blocked, and it's a Hightower point. Oh, that's beautiful. Fabier Aguilar. She scored to make it six to five. Hightower coming up from behind in this game. Now the serve from Reed for Hightower. Randall trying to return it, and that one gets down for a point. And I have the ball in my hands. It's a point for the Randall Lions who take an edge of seven to five. And in, the, in protecting myself, I didn't really get a good view of who made that play. It was Madison Sherry. Seven to five Randall. And now Ramirez back on the court and serving. On top of that one, Favier Aguilar, but good defense by Randall. Keeps it off the floor. And a hot spike coming in from Asia Aikens. But Hightower is able to send it back over. And when they do, Randall doesn't get it back over. So it's 7-6. to six. Hightower fighting back to try and even up this match. They trail it one game to none. 7-6. to six. Tuesday night volleyball. Presented by the Volleyball School. There is the serve of Tanaya Johnson. 
Randall in a position to send it back over, but they do so with a bump, and it's too long. We're tied up in game two, seven to seven. Here goes the serve from Tanaya Johnson. Hightower gets it back on their side. A nice setup for McKenna Henderson, but she can't really get on top of the ball, and Randall keeps it going. Now it's on the Hightower side once again, and we have a whistle. Four hits, they say, on the Hightower side, and we're untied. It's 8-7 to seven, Randall on top. Now skipping onto the floor, I mean literally, it's Imani Uko. I think she likes to serve. She also likes her pink shoes. She also likes her team being in the lead, which the Lions are, eight to seven. Serve comes in hot and low. And now a back set. They set it up for Addison Jones. She cannot get it to go down. Randall tapping it over gently, looking for the open spot. Now Jones gets another chance, but she was not close enough to the net to really make an impact. Now it comes back over to the high tower side as they trail 8-7. And there's a swing and a winner, Fabier Aguilar. Ties it up at 8-all. First year head coach for high tower, Sharonda Marshall, has taken over for Tony Santiago Rhodes, who is now the head coach. Volleyball coach over at George Ranch. And on the Randall side, Kristen Cavallo is the head coach. Her husband is Nick Cavallo, who was the George Ranch football coach. Now he's moved over to Morton Ranch. He's a hired hand who has taken over a new ranch in Katy. Eight to eight the score. I'm not really sure what the delay is. But momentarily, Christine Knowles is going to serve. Now she's dribbling the volleyball like she's playing basketball. The official who is on the floor as opposed to the elevated chair is turned around and is talking to the folks at the scorer's table who operate the scoreboard and keep the official score. And now I think we need a towel. There's some sweat that got on the floor and nobody wants anybody to get hurt here tonight. And Coach Cavallo dropped the towel. Okay, well they just wanted to tuck a towel into the little sconce inside the padding. We waited a long time for that. Okay, eight to eight in game two, Noel serves. Randall attacking back. And it's a point to Hightower as they deny the swinging spike attempt of Asia Akins. Junie Ramirez went up high along with, I'm sorry, uh, Addison Jones went up high along with Monica Daniels. So it's 9-8 to eight, Hightower on top. Randall gets it tied up again though. Beautiful swing from Zara Olivacci who has some sweet feet celebration moves after she gets that spike to go down between the high tower arms. It's nine to nine. And Olavachi serves her. Ramirez actually serves. High tower thought it was gonna be out. They still think it was out, but the official said it was in. And so Randall leads it 10 to nine. Okay, I was wrong on the server. The server is actually Asia Akins. Now Hightower looking to return it. Little tap, getting a little too cute with it was McKenna Henderson. Tried to baby it over the net and it, it touched twine and went to the floor. 11 to nine is the score. Randall on top and Akins will serve again. And she fires it too far to her right. Far sideline, it goes out of bounds. It's 11 to 10. Randall still leading, but Hightower gets the serve back. By the way, I wonder if, uh, when I get a chance, I'm gonna find out from Asia Akins or someone in her family if she is any relation to Willie Mays Akins, who used to hit home runs for the Kansas City Royals in the 70s and 80s. 
All right, for Hightower, it's Jordan Benton, her first action. She serves, and she ends up getting a win of the point on the serve as Randall couldn't send it back. It's 11 to 11. Jordan Benton is no relation to Barbie Benton. You have to be one of the grandparents in our audience to know that one. 11 to 11. Benton serves with her feet on the floor, gets some air under it. Can Randall return it with velocity? It's an attempt and a winner for Zara Olavachi. She didn't swing hard on it, but it went off high tower hands and out of bounds, so point to the Lions. They regain the lead, 12 to 11. Ramirez goes off. Takes a rest on the Randall bench. And she's replaced by Marina Harold. Now it's the Randall serve. Spike attempt from High Towers, Monica Daniels. But Randall there with the defense, and now High Tower gets another chance, and that's a winner. Amari Gori. She gets her first opportunity. It went out of bounds on the far sideline, and it's now 12 to 12. Hightower's server is McKenna Henderson. Jamila Blackman had been in. She came out after playing one point, and now Randall. A double-handed hit, Marina Harold bumps it over and gets the winner, just kind of found a spot between Hightower defenders. It gets down, point to the Lions, they lead 13-12. And a bundle of joy, Madison Thompson leads the floor, leaves the floor. And serving for Randall, it's Morgan Leggington. Big swing for Hightower. They try to get one with Tanaya Johnson. Then she taps it over when it comes back. And now it is Randall trying to tap it into an open spot. And a slap down by Monica Daniels. Randall can't save it. Point to the Hurricanes and they've tied it at 13. Randall won the first game of this three out of five. 25 to 19. Hightower looking to even it up. Monica Daniels will serve from the middle of the baseline. Nice sinking action on it. And there is Graves who tries to go cross court and hits it wide. It goes out and the point goes to the Hurricanes who now have the lead back. 14-13. There's the serve from Monica Daniels. Big swing by Randall, but Hightower handles it. And they will take a big swing of their own. Actually, it ends up being a little tapped by Tanaya Johnson. But Randall keeps it airborne off the floor. Third hit for Hightower goes long. Unfortunately, Tanaya Johnson was unable to really get on top of the ball. And we are tied once again, 14 all. Graves on to serve for Randall with backspin on it. Knowles bumps it up. And now a tap down attempt from Favier Aguilar does not work. Now Randall tries a spike that goes long beyond the baseline. Graves didn't get all of that one. And it kind of sailed on her. 15 to 14 high tower leads and they make two substitutions bringing in Addison Jones, who will serve, and Ajane Reed. A change up on the serve, but Randall keeps it up, and they overset it. And attempt by Asia Akins, not really her fault that she could not get it over, and Hightower has a two-point lead. 16-14, they've scored three straights, and... Lucky bounce on the serve as it crawls over the tape when Reed served it. And now Hightower saves it on a hard spike attempt by Asia Akins. 
and miscommunication, and unfortunately Hightower let it fall between players. The intended recipient of the set didn't realize it. There were two, and each thought the other was going to take it. Randall trailing 16-15 in serving. Juni Ramirez, here it comes. Bumped up by Hightower. Swing by Addison Jones, and it goes wide. Point to Randall. We're tied 16 all. Ramirez has to go beyond the far sideline to retrieve the ball. Now she's ready. This point will untie this game, too. And a nice little setup for Jones, but Randall is there with the defense. The Lions overset it. Hightower can hammer away now. Jones tries again, but Randall gets hands under it and sends it back over. And now a setup. It was a setup for Tania Johnson. I heard a whistle. And the point goes to Randall. Sharonda Marshall, head coach of the Hurricanes in her first year, walking away with a little bit of disappointment. Thinks uh, her team might have given away a couple of points here in the last minute and a half or so. Randall serves, leading 17-16. Now the Randall Lions have it back. Big swing by Graves, and it goes long. Her timing has been just a tick off. To that point goes to the Hurricanes and we're tied at 18. Tanaya Johnson will serve. Looking over at Coach Marshall who makes the signal behind her back. Serve comes in hot but Randall will be able to send it back and they send it back pretty hot. Too hot in fact. Asia Aikens hits it out of bounds far sideline and Hightower leads 18-17. So Tanaya Johnson with another chance to serve. There it goes, and Randall doesn't handle it. Both Aikens and Graves were going for it. It kind of got between them. Timeout taken by Randall. Hightower leads 19-17. We're back in a flash on BikeFortBend.com. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through September 21st, get fast, reliable Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Actual speeds vary. Coming out of the timeout, Hightower scores again. Favier Aguilar. And the service run continues for Tanaya Johnson. The officials are discussing something. I think Randall was arguing that the point should have gone to them. So now you have Graves, one of the captains for the Lions, goes over and talks with the official who's in the elevated chair. I say elevated because if you say high chair, it looks like she's going to have, you know, beats on her face, you know, like a baby in a high chair. 20 to 17, high tower leading, but now they give a point back on the long serve. It is 20 to 18, Randall trailing, serving, trying to take a two games to none lead here after winning the first one, 25 to 19. Tanaya Johnson comes off and she's leaving the gym. No, she's just throwing away her gum. Now she's back on the bench. And a poor serve by Randall. 
Imani Uko hit it into the net, and Hightower has their three-point lead back, 21 to 18. And Christine Knowles will serve, wearing the green libero jersey, spinning the ball, jumps and hits it to the middle, a nice sinker ball, and Randall gets it airborne, and what a tap down, Monica Daniels. It was all Randall could do just to get it back over the net, and I'm not even sure who was able to accomplish that but it was right in the wheelhouse of Monica Daniels, and that gives Hightower a four-point lead. It's 22 to 18. Knowles fires it deep to the middle, bumped up by Ramirez, and now Aikens doesn't really get a chance to spike one. She wanted to, and then she had to just try and bump it up, and it hit both the net and the antenna on the far side. It's a five-point lead for the Hurricanes. 23 to 18 as they try to even this up. Knowles serving. Sinker ball dug out by Randall. Swing by Aikens. Hightower gets it onto the Randall side and they hit it out. Point to the Hurricanes. They're on top 24 to 18. Game point. As they try to even it up and Randall slow rolling the ball back to Knowles near the baseline trying to change the momentum. Christine serves it very gently, just gets it over. Ramirez, the diving save. Now Randall has it again. And there is a winner that ends it. And Hightower has evened up this match. I didn't call that one very well. I'm sorry. But Hightower gets the point that makes it 25 to 18. The teams will change ends. And we'll be back with game three on VipeFortBend.com. Tuesday night volleyball presented by the Volleyball School. We're the Volleyball School with three locations. Katy, the Woodlands, and the newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to help you get on the top club and school teams and have fun while doing it. The Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. First Iron Auto welcomes you back to school. Kids got their new shoes and backpacks. Make sure your auto is geared up for those trips in the carpool lane and games. First Iron Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. Great savings on oil changes and brake service, too. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com. Leonetti Graphics is the gold standard in Fort Bend County for spring uh, screen printing, embroidery, banners, T-shirts, all kinds of specialty items, signs, whatever you need to advertise or to show spirit. Whether it's school spirit, team spirit, or company spirit, nobody does it as well as Leonetti Graphics. You see, I said nobody does it as well. Sometimes you say nobody does it better. Well, nobody even ties them in the race to be great in graphics. They started creating products in an apartment 23 years ago. Now in Stafford, they have a state-of-the-art facility, and they can make your, your designs, your marketing visions come true. So just call the folks at Leonetti Graphics, 281-499-4959. Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider for VipeFortBend.com. We are all tied up, one game to one. Randall won the first one, 25 to 19. And Hightower, 25 to 18 winners. So Randall is back at the south end. And we'll continue this match in just a moment. But first, we're going to remind you that we'll have Tuesday night volleyball presented by the Volleyball School. But on a Friday, when Fulcher takes on Travis, it'll be a good way to end your week. But before we do that Friday competition, we have a Wednesday event tomorrow night from Mercer Stadium. It is what they call the Texas Way Day. 
although it happens at night. 7 p.m. is when we'll start our broadcast as all of the coaches and athletes and a lot of administrators and families and fans of Fort Bend ISD will get together and talk about the UIL's plan to create a better atmosphere of sportsmanship. There have been too many ejections as the leaders of the UIL look at it. And we got to, we know that occasionally those things are going to happen, we, but we have to lower the incidence. We are just about to begin game three as Coach Kristen Cavallo is pacing and pondering, looking at her clipboard. All right, so there is a Randall player who is on and has not been to this point. It is Kira Washington wearing the black libero jersey. Everybody else in a gray jersey top, and Hightower will serve to start game three. It's Monica Daniels. Here comes her serve. And now a setup for Graves, who taps it over instead of spiking. Got it over the block, and now the block works for Randall as Marina Harold stops the attempt of Monica Daniels, and the first point goes to Randall. Graves will go to the baseline and serve. But first, we're going to have to dry up a sweaty spot on the floor. Thank you, Madison Sherry. She's being very thorough. She was using just her shoes, now she's using her hands. And if uh, you're part of the Sherry family, I hope she helps out at home like that. You know, they ought to give her a hand for that. But it's a school night, they've got a lot on their mind. All right, so Graves serves and her serve misses the far sideline. Goes out and we're even one all. Hightower gets the serve back. Ajane Reed moves toward the right corner, her right, and Graves bumps up her serve. Now a setup for Marina Harold, but did she hit the antenna? Hightower players are saying she did. Who are the officials going to give the point to? They give it to Hightower. So Hightower won the argument. Scoreboard says one to one. It should say the guest, that being Hightower, should be in a two to one lead. So we have what uh, critics call a pregnant pause. Theater critics. You know, not the movie ones, the, the ones who go to plays. All right, now they fix the scoreboard. It says Hightower leads 2-1. to one. Reed still serving. Here it comes. Clockwise spin on it. And now there's the big swing from Aikens, and she gets the cross-court winner. Pastes it perfectly into the far corner on the right at the north end. I think it's the north end and the south end, but, you know, I get kind of turned around when I get on FM 2977 and come out here to Randall. Anyway, it's 2-2, two to two and Randall is serving. And Hightower tried to get one down with Tanaya Johnson. Now a skirmish at the net. A little tap over and a winner for Randall. It's Zara Alabache. Opa. I guess that's Italian, not Greek, so Opa. Is, uh, is not really the right word. Anyway, three to two, Randall leads and a service winner. Marina Harold takes something off of it and fools the Hightower Hurricanes. It's now four to two, Randall on top as they are in a one to one match against the Canes. Harold serves, but it goes into the net. A break for Hightower and they get within four to three. Now they'll give it to Tanaya Johnson for a serve. Marina Harold came off. I didn't see who went in for her. Washington bumps up the serve. Aikens is blocked and a winner for Hightower. Couldn't get it over, Favior Aguilar. 
Xavier Aguilar. It's spelled like Aguilar, but pronounced Aguilar, I'm told. 4-4 is the score. And now a set that goes way wide, and Randall kind of got away with one. They set it too wide, but they were able to keep the point going, and then a tap-down winner by Madison Sherry makes it 5-4, five, five Randall. All right. Imani Uko comes in for Madison Sherry. Also coming off for Randall is Madison Thompson. Two Madisons came out. And Imani Uko serve ends up being long. We're tied at five. And Hightower gets the serve back and libero Christine Knowles will do the honors. Spins it. Pretty high toss for a short player. And now a set up for Washington. She's not a spiker, she's a setter. She gets it over. Now Hightower returns it with Monica Daniels. Her shot is defended. Now it's on the Hightower side once again. And a back set for Addison Jones. She gets her shot dug out by Imani Uko for Randall. Now it's on the Hightower side once again. Creative shot tried by Monica Daniels, but the battle goes to Hightower. Daniels did get it down. Just a little flick of the wrist made the ball go sideways rather than come down hard on it with a spike. Six to five, Canes lead in a 1-1 match. Back set for Akins. She's blocked, but it falls on the Randall side, the Hightower side. So it's a point to Randall, and we're tied at six. Akins will serve in her pink shoes, lets it go. Lots of top spin. Knowles digs it out, and Hightower mishandles it. Knowles bumped it up nicely, but after that, it just wasn't good execution. Seven to six is the score. Randall leading. Asia Mays Akins serves. Sends it deep to the middle. Nice bump up by Jamila Blackman. And now one goes way beyond the baseline on the Randall side, but they are able to try and get it back in the air, and they do. But unfortunately, Asia Akins' bump, which was designed to go over the net, hit the rafters and never made it there. 7-6 7-7 to seven is our score. And Amari Gori has come into the match for the first time for Hightower. She's serving as the middle blocker. Now Randall trying to return it. And it is Junie Ramirez who gets it over. Correction, I missed uh, on the number. That was Zara Olavachi. There was a battle at the net and it went to Hightower. The Canes lead it 8-7. to seven. And Jordan Benton will serve. There goes her serve down the far sideline, bumped up by Graves. Now a back set for Olavachi. Cannot get it down, Hightower attacks again, bumping it back over her head is Gori. Now Randall attacks, and a little tap by Graves, and she found an open spot. The winner ties it up at eight. If you like a volleyball match that is close, you have a lot of ties and one score spreads, well, this is your match. Olavachi tosses it high, top spin bumped up by Knowles. Now a back set setting up McKenna Henderson. Cannot get it to go down, now Randall will attack back. Sending it over with a two hand tap and now it is Hightower firing away. That's McKenna Henderson, she is blocked but it goes back on the hurricane side. Battle at the net, it crawled along the top of the net. And now we have a call by one of the corner linesmen as the ball hit the antenna, it is therefore out. And the point goes to Randall, nine to eight. That was a delayed call. We played on for about four or five extra seconds. So good on you, volunteer student lineswoman girl. I guess that's redundant, isn't it? So Olavache serve, just gets over the net, but Hightower with a big winner, and it is Goree. 
Amari Gori goes up high and gets the the win in that womano a womano battle. Nine to nine is our score. So see Gory hit it, and the block was right there, but it fell on the Randall side, and now we're at nine to nine. There is a big swing from Marina Harold, and she gets the winner to put Randall on top again. Ten to nine. Back and forth we go. All right. Substitution. Madison Sherry and Madison Thompson coming in. Michaela Thompson coming out. And also coming out, Imani Uko. Randall leading 10 to nine, they serve. Now Hightower is attacking, that's a winner. Oh, that came in hot. Tanaya Johnson got on top of the ball. And there was one Randall player, Washington, able to touch it, but no way she could keep that airborne. Ten to ten, and now number ten for Hightower, Monica Daniel serves. Bumped up by Akins. Now Graves can't get it over the high tower block. Now Randall sends it over to the high tower side. A back set for uh, Amari Gori, but not her fault. It was just beyond her reach. Randall gets the lead again, 11 to 10. This is game three of a best of five, and it's tied one all. Malaya Graves will serve. Spins it. Let's it fly, comes in hot, and Hightower can't handle it. Tanaya Johnson tried to dig it out. And the lead is two. First time we've seen a two-point lead in a while. We've just had one-point margins and ties for what seems like half an hour. Hightower receiving serve, and Tanaya Johnson gets on top of it, but Randall digs it out and will send it back. Big swing by Aikens, Hightower with a brilliant dig. Got to get it over, and they do. And now in the middle, it's a tap down try by Marina Harold, but Hightower's gonna respond. McKenna Henderson hits one hard, but Randall keeps it off the floor, and there is a winner. Kind of like a blooping base hit in baseball, a winner from Madison Sherry. She didn't hit it nearly as hard as she wanted to but it got over the block and the defenders who were deeper in the court just had no chance to touch it. It's 13 to 10, Randall. And now Hightower misses again. Favier Aguilar tries to wail on one, but doesn't really get on top of the ball and it's 14 to 10. Randall has put together a pretty good run here. Five points straight. Graves serves. Looking for the far right corner and she misses. So now it's a three-point margin, 14 to 11. Gorey comes off for Hightower and also Jordan Benton. On the Randall side, Junie Ramirez comes in and Graves will take a break. 14 to 11, Hightower trailing and serving. And Knowles has to dig one out Deep in the backcourt, and there is another sir or another spike attempt where Favier Aguilar just did not get on top of the ball, and she hit it long. It's 15 to 11. Randall leading and serving. Marina Harold goes deep to the middle, and she hits it long. Point to Hightower. It's 15 to 12. Kane's looking at a three-point margin. Tanaya Johnson in the middle of the baseline. We'll let it go. Bumped up nicely by Akins. Little back set for uh, Madison Sherry, but she lifted it and was called for that. So it's now 15 to 13. High tower down by two in points in this game three. The match is even one all, and unfortunately for the Canes. Tanaya Johnson served it into the net. Lots of Randall substitutions. Another double substitution. It looks like it'll be 
Imani Uko and Michaela Thompson coming in. And the other Thompson twin goes out. And let's see. <clears throat> Madison Sherry also out. 16-13 the score in Randall serving. Hightower receiving serve, now sending it back. Big wild spike attempt by McKenna Henderson and she just fanned on it. I think she just took her eye off the ball and it's point to Randall, they lead by four, 17-13. Zara Olavachi with a sinker ball serve. Hightower tries to send it back, but it went outside the red and white boundary antenna. That's what happened. Kristen Cavallo, head coach of Randall, can't believe the non-call, and I can't either. It clearly went outside the antenna. That point should have gone to Randall, but it went to Hightower, and it's now 17 to 14. Big swing by Akins, goes to the far left corner, but Hightower digs it out. Little two-hand tap over, does not surprise Randall. Now Akins tries again with a spike, and that goes down for a winner. 18 to 14. Randall on top, trying to gain a two games to one lead as they battle in game three here. There was supposed to be a substitution uh, Coach Cavallo wanted Graves to go in at that little break. All right, Hightower has a, spot, a hard spike attempt but does not get a point out of it. Asia Aiken sends it back. And now a bad back set by Hightower goes not only over the net but way out of bounds on the far sideline, 19-14. Ramirez comes off for Randall. And Amani Uko, I believe, came in for her. 19 to 14, Randall, they're serving. Bump up by Hightower. Big hard spike attempt, that was a beauty. Monica Daniels gets it down to get within 19 to 15. And they're... Uh, Another high tower substitution as Jordan Benton goes in for Addison Jones. Benton serves. A lot of air under it. Easy return for Randall. What will they do? Graves tries to tap it with the left hand, but high tower keeps it airborne, and that point goes to Randall. High tower touched the net. High tower knocked the ball over, but not without touching the net. 20 to 15, Randall leads. And now they send Zara Olavachi back out there. Nice hot serve coming in. Sinking action like a split finger fastball. Hightower can't handle it. And that makes it 21 to 15. Timeout. Hightower. They're trailing by six in game three. First Iron Auto welcomes you back to school. Kids got their new shoes and backpacks. Make sure your auto is geared up for those trips in the carpool lane and games. First Iron Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. Great savings on oil changes and brake service too. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com. Whenever you need screen printing, embroidery, banners, signs, t-shirts, any kind of specialty item, remember Leonetti Graphics is the official banner provider of VikeFortBend.com. Call them at 281-499. 4959. The action has resumed. It's 21 to 15. Randall on top. Now the ball is on the high tower side of the net. And a big swing comes up empty. McKenna Henderson. She was going to get blocked if it had made it over the net. And that shot hit the net. 
22 to 15, Randall. They are on quite a run here. Seven out of the last eight points. And now Hightower mishandles the serve. Olavachi, I think she's looking a little uncomfortable, like maybe kind of a little twitch in her back when she served that one, but she's got her right hand on the right hip. She's hurting a little bit. 23 of 15 after that winning serve. Hightower trying to stop the bleeding here. Big swing by Gorey. It's blocked out of bounds and a point to the Canes. That gets them, wait a minute. Point went to Randall. I thought that should have been Hightower's point, but evidently it was Randall's and it's game point. Captains are at the elevated chair on the far side of the court, talking it over. I'm thinking it should be 23 to 16, not 24 to 15. Randall has already been denied a point they should have had earlier in this game when a ball went outside of the red and white boundary antenna. And nobody noticed. And you know what? They say it's going to be a do-over. So the score is not 24 to 15. It's not 23 to 16. It'll be a do-over. Wait wait a minute. She, the, the umpire just put two thumbs up to say it's a do-over, and then they changed it to 23-16. Now they've got it right. 23 to 15, and a serve is out by Randall. Could this be a big momentum turner? It remains to be seen, but Hightower does get a, a point that they didn't have to earn, and now they're down 23 to 16. Now they send McKenna Henderson back to the baseline to serve, throws a sinker ball. Randall is going to be able to return it hard, and it is Marina Harold who has her shot sent back. Now Randall bumps it over to Hightower, and the Canes will go on offense. And there's a little bump by Aguilar. Cannot get it to go down. Hard spike by Randall, and a winner for Hightower. Great job by Tanaya Johnson. Gets her team within 23 to 17. McKenna Henderson will continue serving. Here comes her serve coming in hot, bumped up by Randall. And they don't get it over. A misdirected bump, or I should say a misdirected set. The bump wasn't bad, the set didn't go where anybody could really do anything with it, so it's 23 to 18. Hightower continuing to come back. And there is Gorey right there at the net. She comes up with a winner. As Randall overset it, Gorey for Hightower tapped it down and Randall then hit it out of bounds. It's a four point game, 23 to 19. And a nice hot serve coming in. Randall hits it into the net. The Lions are really Failing to execute here, 23 to 20. Henderson's service continues. Bumped up by Washington. Now a setup. Uh, nobody knew who was going to take the ball, but Randall did get it over. And now a bump for Blackman. She cannot get it to go down. Aiken sends it over for Randall. And Knowles with an emergency dig to get it over the net. Now Randall attacking. Graves bumps it over. And Graves does the same thing again. And now a swing and finally the point gets down for Randall. And Kristen Cavallo is, is uh, I think she is saying that Hightower should have been called for a violation at some time during that point and the point should have ended earlier in her opinion I saw her say the words every time when that's the last two words of a sentence usually it's complaining about an official's call okay it is game point 24 to 20 Randall trying to put away game three and there is the serve of Madison Thompson Hightower 
Cannot get it back over, and that'll do it in game three. They, the Randall Lions now lead two games to one. And we'll be back on VibeFortBend.com. Tuesday night volleyball on VibeFortBend.com, presented by the Volleyball School. And we'll be back. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through September 21st, get fast, reliable Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Actual speeds vary. Be sure to be with us tomorrow night. That would be Wednesday. Wednesday the, uh, Wednesday the, oh, it's, it's the 21st, and it's at Mercer Stadium. It is called the Texas Way Day. The UIL has a new initiative orienting coaches and players and everybody connected with UIL athletics to avoid getting those technical fouls and those ejections and things like that that, uh, are making our games less enjoyable. So in the midst of the great competition across the great state of Texas, they're initiating this thing called the Texas Way. And at Mercer Stadium tomorrow night, we'll get a really good introduction to it and an orientation to it. And we will bring it to you live at 7 p.m. And if you miss the live broadcast, you can always listen on the podcast at vipefortmen.com. We'll be right back with the start of game four. Randall leads Hightower two games to one in this three out of five volleyball match, and we shall return. We're the volleyball school with three locations, Katy, the Woodlands, and the newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to help you get on the top club and school teams and have fun while doing it. The Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. It's a school night. We all need know that people need to get home and uh, get in bed, but the high tower girls say let's stay here till we get to a fifth game so they're going to try and win game four here and and push it to that fifth game where you played a 15. so we were unable to determine exactly how many matches randall had won and lost coming into this game but the only thing that their head coach Kristen cavallo would tell us is that they were 2-0 at home, and so now they have an opportunity to improve to 3-0 at home. They won the first game 25-19, the second they lost 25-18, and then in game three, Randall just beat Hightower 25-20, so the Lions girls can end it right here, and they get to serve first in game four, and the serve of Madison Thompson goes out of bounds. High Tower now has a one to nothing lead and they will start serving with Monica Daniels. Bumped up by Washington on the Randall side of the net. Graves taps one over a block and what a clever move by Miss Graves. She gets the winner to even up game four, one all. Christine Knowles comes on. And Monica Daniels goes out. Randall serving with Graves. High bump 
Set looks pretty good, but uh, problem at the net, and the point goes to the Hightower Hurricanes. One too many hits. I'm sorry, the, the point goes to the Randall Lions. One too many hits on the Hightower side. Two to one, Randall, and Graves fires her serve again with top spin. Nice setup and a big swing on the part of Tanaya Johnson, but Randall with great defense is able to keep it up in the air, and Gorey fires away. She gets the winner for Hightower. And Gorey, I believe, is going to come out. Ajene Reed will replace her. And Addison Jones comes on, and she replaces Jordan Benton. Two to two in this game four that Hightower has to win to send it to a fifth. Here's the serve by Reed, and a beauty! Randall can't handle it. Washington and... Uh, and Aikens both going for it. I think they might have bumped into each other. They were rolling around and uh, in pain, it looked like, but not too much pain. So we're going again, but now Hightower gives back a point with a long serve. Reed hit it long. Three to three is our score. Marina Harold fires away. Bumped up by Hightower, and they set it up for Favier Aguilar. And whose point is that? It's the Randall Lions point. She was blocked, and it fell on the Hightower side. So Randall serving again with Harold. Now a nice set by Reed, and it's a Hightower winner. They get Addison Jones a kill. That makes it four to four. Hightower will serve, Tanaya Johnson. Jumps as she serves, it nicked the tape but got over. Randall firing it back and that's a winner by Akins. I don't know that that's what she meant to do. I think she completely mishit it and yet it fell inside the near sideline. And a point to Randall makes it five four. The always joyful Imani Uko, the sophomore, comes on for Randall to serve with her team up 5-4. to four. That was a knuckleball serve, and now it is sent back by Favier Aguilar. Randall is able to respond with the defense, and they get a winner. The second hit by Hightower, instead of going up or back toward the net, went back toward the, the baseline, and... Bounced off the vinyl padded wall. So Randall is up six to four. All right, Hightower ready to attack. Addison Jones tries to get one down, but Randall is able to send it back. Now Hightower with another chance to bump set Spike, and they try it with McKenna Henderson, but Randall sends it back. Hot smash coming over off the hand of Aikens, but Hightower handles that, and then an unforced error as Knowles hits the ball into the net. Needed to keep moving her feet so she was in a better position. Seven to four, after that Randall point, the Lions lead it. And Hightower will try to respond well here, and McKenna Henderson sends it to the middle, but Randall bumps it up again. They bump it over. Hightower can be very aggressive here. There's another try by Henderson, but she is not able to get on top of the ball, and Randall just sends it over gently. Now Hightower again, and that is going to be a point for Randall. Off the side of the fist of Tanaya Johnson. Correction, Addison Jones. So eight to four, Randall leads it. And the serve continues for Amani Uko. Hightower looking to hit it hard. Favier Aguilar cannot get the winner. Now it's back on the Hightower side. They'll get another chance. Down the far sideline, McKenna Henderson. She gets the winner. Four straight points 
by Randall, but that streak is now ended, and it's eight to five. Knowles ready to serve, spinning the, ba uh, the, the basketball. She was dribbling early like the volleyball was a basketball. Now she serves. Randall is going to get a chance to attack with Michaela Thompson, but Hightower is going to send it back, and a nice little tap over by McKenna Henderson, but Randall digs it out. Now the Lions send it back. Beautiful dig by Hightower, set all the way back over the net, and now Randall attacking, now Hightower attacking. Little fingertip tap by Monica Daniels, but Randall's handle, Randall handles it. And a back set for Addison Jones and a winner. Hard ricochet into the far side stands. After giving up four straight points, Hightower has scored two to trim the margin to eight to six. Knowles will continue serving. Here goes her serve to the deep right corner. Dug out nicely by Michaela Thompson. Now Hightower can do their thing. Knowles just has to bump it over. Got to get it over on this hit. Does Randall, and they do. Now a set up nicely for Monica Daniels, but Randall brings it back. And now a point for Randall. A nice spike by Akins. It was blocked by Hightower players, but it fell on their side, on the Hightower side. So the Randall lead is now 9-6. to six. And Junie Ramirez comes off. Asia Aiken serving. Leaps as she does with top spin. Dug out nicely by Hightower. And there's a winner by Monica Daniels. I think she elevates as well as anyone who is on the court tonight. And she gets the game to 9-7. And now Graves of Randall, one of the captains, Goes over to talk to the umpire in the elevated chair as Kristen Cavallo continues to be upset. But in volleyball, the coaches and the benches are on one side and the official in the elevated chair is over on the far side. So the player captains advocate for calls. All right, we got a good point going here as it is 9-7 Randall. And Graves taps it over. Now it's on the high tower side. Nice set up for Henderson. Dug out by Washington on the Randall side. Now the Lions attack, and it's a point two. Randall, because it went off a high tower hand. If they had left it alone, it would have been long. But you know, you can't think those are just reflexes. You react quickly. 10 to seven, Randall. Zara Olavachi serves, her serve is long, not even close. That ball went off in her hands. 10 to eight, Hightower gets back within two. Hightower down two to one in this match and they've gotta win this game four to prolong it. Coach Sharonda Marshall in her first year with the Hurricanes makes the signal for her server. And there it goes off the hand of McKenna Henderson and it's an ace. She drops it in to make it 10 to nine. It's like a swing and a miss when you throw that split finger fastball. Henderson ready to serve again. She's gonna be in the middle of the baseline. There it goes. Another one with top spin. Akins fires and Hightower can't keep it off the floor. It hit Knowles' hands and she meant to kind of direct it upward, but instead, unfortunately for the Hurricanes, it fell to the hardwood. And you know, I think my, my new favorite player is Imani Uko. She shows so much joy, and it's real joy, not fake joy. 11 to nine, Randall leading, and Hightower trying to get a winner, and they don't. There was a little skirmish. I couldn't see who was responsible for it, but Randall blocked one at the net, and it fell on the high tower side, and the score is now 12-9 to as Olavachi serves again. There's a setup by Jordan Benton, setting it up for Goree, sends it over to the Randall side. 
There might have been two hits by one player, and Randall might have gotten away with it. Now it's on the high tower side. Gorey spikes it into the net. And the point goes to Randall, and they're up by four, 13 to nine. 12 points away from a four-game victory. If they can get it. Madison Thompson will serve. Here it comes. Knowles bumps it up near the baseline. Now the swing of Tanaya Johnson does not yield a point. Battle at the net. Stays on the Randall side. Akins fires away and hammers it into the net. Giving a point away to Hightower. The Canes are down 13 to 10. Be sure to be with us on Friday night. Tuesday night volleyball presented by the Volleyball School, but it on, it's on a Friday night as Travis hosts Fulcher. All right. Randall makes another unforced error hitting it into the net when it was a pretty nice set. And it's a two-point game, 13 to 11. There goes the serve of Monica Daniels. Randall. Unable to spike it, they just bump it over. And now a quick set that works! Jordan Benton! Oh, what a great idea. She fooled everyone on the Randall side, and now it's 13 to 12. Yep, the high tower girls would really be fired up if they can tie this thing. Daniels serves again. Bumped up by Washington. Randall looking to respond with Graves. She is blocked at the net. Stays above the floor on the Randall side. And the Lions. Got to bump it over on this spot shot, and they do. Now Hightower ready to fire away. It is Johnson who gets the winner. And we're tied at 13. We might get a timeout. Randall, that is indeed what we get. We'll be back on VibeFortBend.com. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um... My daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through September 21st, get fast, reliable Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Actual speeds vary. The action resumes coming out of the timeout, and the timeout didn't change anything. Hightower scores again. It was Marina Harold of Randall firing it, and she had a really good spike going, but the block was there. And it's 14 to 13 Hightower as they try to prolong this match to a fifth game, and now a service winner off the forearms of Marina Harold. Number 10, Monica Daniels of Hightower served it. Number 10 of Randall was unable to redirect it properly. It's 15 to 13, Hightower. Now Randall will try to send it back. They send it deep. Now it's back on the Hightower side. And a big swing and a winner by Tanaya Johnson. A wave of momentum has carried Hightower to a 16-13 lead. They were down 13 to nine. Seven straight points for the Lady Canes. There goes Monica Daniels, serving it into the middle. Randall gets a spike, and it's a good one from Akins. That ends the run. Correction, it's not Akins. Sorry about that. Madison Sherry. And that ends the run of seven straight. Hightower still on top, 16-14 in this Game four, which they must win. They're down two to one in this match. Graves serves for Randall, just over the net. Jordan sets it up for Johnson, who 
Tries to get a winner and does. There's just not a lot of movement on the defensive side for Randall. So Coach Kristen Cavallo brings in Junie Ramirez. Graves may need a break. So Ramirez comes in for Graves. 17-14, Hightower leads it. Ajene Reed gets it over the net. Sideways bump. Randall can't possibly get it over with three hits. They're just mishandling the volleyball. And now they're down 18-14. The Hightower girls on the bench are dancing. Reed serves again. Knuckleball bumped up by Ramirez. And now a swing by Marina Harrell does not get down. Hightower taps it over with a little improvisation on the part of Reed. And it's a point to Randall. So it's still a 9-2 run by Hightower and they lead it 18 to 15. But now Randall gets the serve back. Harold fires it. Good clean bump by Hightower and now a nice swing that is blocked. Addison Jones went right to the net and Randall blocked it down to get within 18 to 16. Marina Harold serves again. Top spin bumped up by Knowles. And now a setup and an unforced error. Unfortunately for the Hightower, Hurricanes, McKenna Henderson hit it into the net. It's a one point game, 18-17. There is yet another serve by Harold. Trying to tie up game four. Randall attacking, but it's a Hightower point as Harold is blocked by Madison Thompson. I'm sorry, that's impossible, they're teammates. Marina Harold was blocked by Favier Aguilar. And that makes it 1917 Canes. There goes a serve. Randall attacking, and it would have been out, but unfortunately Hightower touched it. It was off the fingertips of Tanaya Johnson. That makes it 19-18. There's no way to judge in that fraction of a second whether it's going to be long or not. You just go for it. Out of all those habits of playing volleyball for years, now Imani Uko and her smile will serve. Randall is down in this game four, 19-18. Looking to get the equalizing point. Uko lets it fly off the top of the net and it crawls over. A break for Randall and we are tied at 19. Uko ready to serve it up again. She does, Knowles bumps it up high. Battle at the net, it's now on the Randall side. A big swing on Aiken's part, but Hightower returns it. Now the big swing from Henderson, and it's a Hightower point. The Canes are back on top, 20 to 19. Favier Aguilar comes out. Knowles comes back onto the floor. And she will serve. There goes the Noel serve, bumped up by Ramirez. Randall trying to respond. Akins with a hard spike, but it's long. And it's a 21-19 high tower lead. Knowles will serve again. She likes to spin the ball a lot. There it goes, deep to the right corner. Bumped to the middle of the floor. And now it is on the high tower side again. Nice improvisation by Monica Daniels to send it over. And now a big swing by Aiken. She is blocked. Stays on the Randall side above the floor. And now a little two-hand tap to try and find an open space. But Hightower still attacking. Now it is going to be a battle at the net. It stays on the Randall side. Washington bumping it up. And Hightower can't save that one. It hits the floor. 
and it's 21 to 20. Kane still holding on to the lead. A supreme effort by Christine Knowles. She hit the floor hard with no regard to her, her safety. Lions fans having fun. 21 to 20, they're trying to tie it up. Bumped up nicely by Jamila Blackman. Hightower sends it over to the Randall side. Washington just bumps it over, that's all she can do. And now a nice setup, and a point for Randall. As Monica Daniels spiked it hard, but right into a block, and it came back down on the Hightower side. We're even at 21 all. Asia Akins to serve, here it comes. And is it out? It is. 22 to 21, Hightower gets the lead back. If Howard Cosell were alive and here, he'd say, what a volleyball match this turned out to be. Will it go five? Jordan Benton serves for Hightower, which leads 22 to 21. Now there's a cross-court attempt on the part of Madison Sherry. And Hightower gets a chance to respond, but... The Lions are over the defense and a beautiful spike by Graves. She pasted it to the baseline. Tying it at 22 all. Randall wants to end it right here in this game four. They don't want to go five. Zara Olavachi picking up the ball and will go to the baseline and serve. Here comes her serve. Dug out nicely by Knowles. And a little setup for Gory. And she almost gets one down, but Randall responds. And there's a spike winner for Randall, and they take the lead. Michaela Thompson. Gets it down between defenders. And it's 23 to 22. Randall feeling some home court magic. And now a serve that goes long. And it's 23 all. Olavachi, maybe just a little bit too amped up on that serve. All right, so Hightower will try to get the lead back. Tanaya Johnson, waiting till she gets the go-ahead from the official, and she does. There it goes. Randall is gonna be able to send it back, and they do with Michaela Thompson. Hightower now attacking, Gory! She gets the winner! 24-23 Hightower, game point. They want to make it go the distance, make it go five. I misidentify the server, it's actually McKenna Henderson. Before she does, timeout taken by the Randall Lions. We'll take it with them, fightfortbend.com. the volleyball school with three locations Katy, the woodlands and the newest in richmond on west belfort we have the best developmental volleyball program in fort bend we have the high level training you need to help you get on the top club and school teams and have fun while doing it the richmond facility is at 18120 west belfort visit the volleyballschool.com and come train with us all right, so Hightower didn't take too much time in the timeout huddle. They were out there on the floor, and Randall wanted to uh, get as much counsel as possible as they try to fight off a game point. And here is the serve of McKenna Henderson. Randall trying to keep game four going. Akins bumps it over. Hightower can attack. Big swing down the far sideline, but it hit the antenna. And we're tied at 24. That was Tanaya Johnson, and it brushed that red and white antenna that represents the far sideline boundary. So it's 24 all. Now it comes down to whoever gets a two point lead. 
Down at the other end for Randall. It is Morgan Leggington. She fires it, bumped up by Knowles. Now a set up for Gorey. She hits it hard. Randall blocks it. Battle at the net. Still on the Randall side. And it's a Randall point. They lead 25-24. And it is match point. All right, Morgan Leggington, ready to deal. Here it comes. Bumped up by Hightower. Now they're gonna set it up for Daniels. She gets it over, Randalls responds, looking for an open spot, Knowles bumps it up, and now they get it in the hands of number eight, Johnson. She hits it out, and Randall wins. 26 to 14. A seesaw, game four, goes the Randall Lions' way, and they get a four-set win. Good sportsmanship shown as the players shake hands under the net. And the Hightower Hurricanes know they were battling a quality team, and From what we hear, Randall has lost more matches than it's won so far, but they've played some very, very tough competition. So Hightower falls to five and three, and Randall improves to three and oh in their home matches. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. We'll be back to wrap this one up. We might have a post-match interview. Don't know. If we don't, that's okay. We'll still have some valuable information for you. Don't go away. This is VibeFortBend.com. First Iron Auto welcomes you back to school. Kids got their new shoes and backpacks. Make sure your auto is geared up for those trips in the carpool lane and games. First Iron Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. Great savings on oil changes and brake service, too. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. Well, the Randall Lions make the home fans happy with a four-game win over High Tower. The scores were 25-19. 18-25, 25-20, and 26-24. So Randall improves to 3-0 and in their home matches, and they are getting tuned up where they will be really ready for district play in what is, for them, a new district. All right, we want to remind you that tomorrow night we'll have the Texas Way Day, although it will be a night event that starts at 7 p.m. at Mercer Stadium. Hope you'll join us for that, and you'll learn all about the new initiative to to get better sportsmanship and fewer ejections and technical fouls and, you know, some of the things that you just don't want happening in high school competition. We want to keep the competition uh, maintaining all of the factors that we love so much, but with, uh, with a little bit better sportsmanship, and we'll learn a lot about that tonight starting, or tomorrow night, rather, starting at 7 p.m., Then on Friday night, it's Tuesday night volleyball presented by the volleyball school on Friday night as we have the Fulcher Charger girls who are going to be state ranked very soon in Class 6A. They'll take on the Travis Tigers. Then on Tuesday of next week, more volleyball, Tuesday night volleyball presented by the volleyball school as Ridgepoint visits Fulcher. And then our football coverage will start Thursday the 29th, Clear Falls taking on Hightower. Friday night, it's Clements against Crawford. And on Saturday, it's Lamar Consolidated against the Willow Ridge Eagles. So for Merle Bertrand and everybody who is a part of VibeFortBend.com, this is Roger Smith bidding you a very fond good night from Rosenberg, where Randall defeated Hightower in four hard sets in girls' volleyball. We will talk to you tomorrow night from Mercer Stadium at 7 p.m. Good night, everybody.